Welcome back to your soon-to-be favorite podcast. I'm Angelica. And I'm Kelsey. And this is Here We Grow. Is this really how people see me? Perceive me, yeah. But you know, it's different though. It is different, yeah. Because if but you is look it your, better? <laughs> if you look at yourself in the mirror, you're seeing a mirrored version of you. And even in photos, you're like selfies, you're seeing a mirrored version of you. No, no, but even then, it's different. Everyone's perception of everyone is different. Yeah. That freaks me out. <laughs> that freaks me out. Like how how am I really perceived? Am I cute? You are cute. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. What's up, guys? Hello. We're back. Oh, we're back. I hope you guys really like. I try not to do that every episode. <laughs> I hope you guys like last episode. Um, not that I'm biased or anything, but I think it was like our best. Yeah, it was episode good. to date. We got lots of clips out of it. We've already posted four clips, and there's two more that I haven't posted yet. Yeah. I mean, I think the most, like, the last one that I thought was really good was the one where we, sh- we all accidentally almost shit ourselves. <laughs> no, you always say it wrong. <laughs> I almost said, you know, the one where we shit ourselves? Uh, yeah, but you still said it we wrong. We accidentally almost shit ourselves. Scared the shit out of ourselves. <laughs> we accidentally scared the shit out of ourselves. Every time she refers to that episode, she says, we accidentally shit ourselves. And I'm like, no, we didn't. We accidentally scared, scared the shit out of ourselves. Scared the shit out of ourselves was, like, was like <laughs> the last one yeah, that was really I, good. I feel like... Because we were saying, like, that would be the episode that I would point someone towards if they were, like, yeah. listening to oh, us now, for the first now time. It's, yeah. Now the, it's last, last episode. Yeah. So if you guys have a friend that you really want to put on our podcast, send them the last yeah. episode. I would say still 26, which is the when we accidentally scared the shit out of ourselves. 26 is, like, the funny one that you would show your friend. And then the serious one would be the one okay, we just yeah, went yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I feel like I have Ladies and Tangents episodes where I'm like, okay, here's a really funny one. And here's a really serious one. Like, here's the best of both worlds mm-hmm. that you'll you'll yeah. be able to tell if you like them. Because not every episode is going to be funny or ha ha he he the whole time. Like, right. And that's not our intention. I mean, it's going to be like life. a little dull sometimes. And yeah. that's okay. Sometimes we swing and we miss. Yeah. Yeah, we swing and we miss. Mm-hmm. I put earrings on specifically for today's video, and I realized that my headphones cover it, so that was a waste. And it's going to annoy you later. You're going to be like, oh, my earrings are hurting me. Yeah, they're kind of like pushing in my skin. Yeah. So the other day on Tuesday, we had a little girls' night, and Kelsey made us um, like ham and turkey sandwiches. Sliders, yeah. Sliders. And I fed one to Bolin, and he probably ate like three of them on the day of. Mm-hmm. His farts, bro. I was oh. going to say that deli meat is not great for dogs. What? I mean, like, because they're farting. It makes them fart. <laughs> what? I mean, it makes people fart. So, of course, it's going to make dogs fart. Dude, it smells so horrendous. Mm-hmm. Like like a human fart. <laughs> horrendous, bro. Like he just went in there and blew up the bathroom. Oh, it's so bad. It's so gross. Also, while they were here, my niece and nephew were here. And my nephew goes up to my alloy plant that had a baby a year ago. And he, um... <laughs> He was so sad that she just grabbed one of the alloy, what are they called? Leaves plant? I have to correct you. It's aloe. Alloy? Aloe. What am I, what am I saying? Alloy. Aloe. Is it, but people pronounce it alloy. I've never heard it pronounced alloy. It's not even spelled alloy. I know it's not. It's oh. A-L-O-E. Which is aloe. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes it's not always pronounced how it's perceived to be pronounced. Okay. Just like how people perceive you and stuff. Yeah. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Nope, it's, it's oh, gone. He pulled the... Well, I want to know the end of it. <laughs> it's done. He pulled the leaf off of it? Uh-huh. It just had babies? Uh-huh. Or that was the baby? That was the baby. <gasps> the baby killed the baby? <laughs> the baby killed the baby. Bam. And so I had to chase him to make sure he didn't drop it because aloe is toxic to dogs. Oh, yeah, it is. Most succulents are. That's crazy. Well, speaking of toxicity over here, that same night, Cash was here, and his eye got super red, and we have no idea why. Mm-hmm. He's been here before, but not inside for as long as he was. Like, he was here when my dad was here. 
Ooh, that was a while ago. Yeah, but it wasn't like that was that January long. at the end of January. Yeah, it's it wasn't that months. long though. It was like maybe an hour. But we had been here about an hour and a half, and he was interacting a lot more with Bolin. And so I wonder if he's allergic to dogs, which I'm really going to be upset about if he's allergic to dogs. <laughs> because I do want to have a family dog one day when he's a little bit older. But yeah, his eye got super red and like there was bumps on, on his bottom lid. And But why just one eye though? I don't know. And that's another thing. It could be that he like got a dog hair in his eye. Yeah. Or that he or Adriel poked his eye and then like it was just irritated. But it was an allergic reaction because the Benadryl helped. Oh, okay. So, well, maybe it was Bolin. I don't know. What sucks is that we're going to have to trial and error to find out. Like, we're going to have to just have him around another dog again to find out if that if that's what it is. And it was not pretty. But it was cleared up by, by basically, like, the next morning. Good. So. Oh, no. <laughs> it's too early to be yawning. Even though it's 1036. <laughs> All right, y'all. We got a good episode ahead for you today. Hopefully another good one to back up the last one. And we're going to be talking about sex. Let's talk about sex. Baby. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about you and me. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about all the good things and the bad things that make me. Let's talk about Bald sex. Um, so if you are a family member of ours, please turn this off. <laughs> I you were going to say, so if you are having sex, <laughs> this is a good episode. If you're today. having sex, stay tuned. If you are under the age of 18, I have to advise that you get your parent or guardian to listen to this episode. <laughs> but, um, otherwise, stick around. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun conversations about sex. And then we're going to also have some serious conversation about sex. It's going to be a little bit of both. And, yeah. So let's jump into it. I have a quote of the week. I have a quote of the week. Followed by some other stuff to like kind of back up the quote of the week. So it's going to be kind of mixed in. Um, I used to think that the worst thing in life was to end up alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel alone. Robin Williams. And the reason I wanted to use that quote <clears throat> is because I was listening to this podcast episode today. And they were talking about like being single and specifically being single in your thirties um, and like being in the dating world in your thirties. And so I, I just kind of wanted to touch on this um, societally. And there's a lot of things to blame for this. We treat being single, like the bad thing. Like if you're single, oh, there's something wrong you're with you. Single? It's yeah. like you're pity them. Yeah. It's like, there's something wrong with you if you're single. And we even say it like, oh, why is he still single? Like there, there must be something wrong with him or, you know, vice versa. Um, and especially in like church culture, they'll be like, you know, save yourself for your husband. Like the goal is to then get married. Like it's never a goal to find yourself. It's always a goal to find your husband. Mm -hmm. And so you, you do all of this work when you're very young, um, creating yourself for your future husband and not creating yourself for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people get caught up in not wanting to be alone because that's like the worst possible thing that could happen is to be single. Um, well also like you have, uh, like special occasions or holidays. Oh, like, Hey, do you have a boyfriend? Like yeah. what, that's like the main topic. And it's like, and if everybody's already coupled up. And, yeah. Um, like, oh, look at Jimmy. He's still single. Yeah. We had said before that, that another part that, like, continues that narrative is that you never see in media or in your life growing up a successful single person who's mm -hmm. happy to mm -hmm. be single, who's happy just being themselves. Mm -hmm. It's always someone who is looking for looking for a relationship, like, vigorously looking for a yeah. relationship right. or in one or in an I mean, unhappy marriage. Because well, we fantasize that, like... You know, it's fantasized more often to find someone and be with someone yeah. than to, like you said, find yourself. Right. They were also <clears throat> talking about this concept of... Um, to be loved and not love yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were also talking about this concept of, like, um, to have a rich life starts when you're married. Like, like, your life begins when you've married your husband. 
when you when you've gotten married, then you can start your family. That's when your life begins. Well, yeah, and it's because like you're always pending until then. Right. You're not complete yeah. until you have a spouse, until you have a family. Right. But you should be complete on your own. Right. Yeah. That's so insane. I just saw a TikTok of a girl. She said, you know, I'm, I forget how old she was, but she was like, I'm a woman, a single woman, successful living on my own. And I am breaking generational curses. Like mm-hmm. I'm the first one. Yeah. My mom could not live alone. Did not yeah. live alone. My grandmother did not, could not. Same thing for their mother and their mother. Mm-hmm. She's the first one. Wow. And she's like. You know, like, this is what we need to be doing. This right. is this is the new new. Right. This is the new new. Um, the next part I was going to say was, like, so. Wait. Go ahead. I have another. <laughs> there is this quote that she said. Um, ah. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to get their quote wrong. But she says something like. Men are so surprised that women are single by choice because men themselves are not single by choice. Oh, wow. That is no shade to any men. Okay, first of all, first and foremost, but it's like these men. (laughs) No shade to any men, but it's like these men out here. (laughs) Sorry, let let me back that up. What I'm trying to say is a lot of women, how you're saying is they would rather be alone and mm-hmm. work on themselves and be in an unhappy relationship. Mm-hmm. That's what she meant by choice. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> These men. So the next part I was going to say was, remember we quoted recently from the Do the Work podcast, um, someone being an addition to your life rather than instead of. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes Love. sense to that last quote of like, the idea that there's always this idea that your life is richer when you becomes a rich life when you get married, but you can have a rich life alone by yourself, learning who you are and becoming who you are and successing who you are, buying a house by yourself and all those things. She was even saying like some people put off, buy, some women put off buying a house because they're like, well, what's it going to be like when I find my soulmate and then we have to, you know, whatever you figure that shit out. Like don't hold off on your dreams to find a man. Oh my God. No shade to my coworker, but she just told me that about her daughter. Like her daughter wants to build a house and do all this and do all that. And one of her main concerns, first concerns was, well, what is, what if, what if your husband doesn't want that? She's not married currently. She yeah. doesn't even have a boyfriend, the daughter. Yeah. Who cares? It's like she's telling her to hold off on her dreams and what she wants for some man that doesn't even exist yet. Right. So a man that doesn't exist, who only exists hypothetically, is more important than what a woman wants in society. And it also sucks, too, because, again, no shade to men, but this is true. (laughs) These men. (laughs) A man, like, generally speaking, his biggest concern doesn't have to be marriage and a family Mm -hmm. because he doesn't have a running clock Mm. a man's man a man's main focus (laughs) can be his career yeah versus a woman she has to almost choose between either or Mm -hmm. or struggle between having both right yeah that's true just based off of a timeline exactly yeah it's it's do i put off you know having children and spend my childbearing prime years Mm -hmm. on chasing this dream this career that i want and then by the time i have it what am i 30 35 yeah you know and and by then you may not be able to have children it's that soon especially this day and age it's like back further back and further back huh (laughs) because of like artificial hormones and stuff like the things we already know i know but that scares me i know did you know that if your period i'm not a medical professional but i read somewhere that like if your period lasts less than two days that's concerning because it just could possibly potentially mean you're just less fertile is, is yours no mine's three days oh mine was four days and i had a kid three days <laughs> i'm three days but you're still like you just recently came off birth control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked Your to my doctor. She said it's out. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your own hormones and everything. I know, but that's what it said because yeah. it's releasing less eggs. Scary. Um. So another point about being single is the fear of being single 
rushes us into relationships that are not right for us ah. from a very early age, yep. from the age in which it's most dire that you not be rushed into a relationship that is bad for you. Mm-hmm. When you're a young adult or a teenager and <clears throat> you have these thoughts in movies and TV shows and church and everyone saying that, oh, you're going to find the right guy one day and that's all you're looking for, then that's all you're looking for. Well, it's like, who doesn't love a romantic comedy or a romantic yeah movie in general like oh yeah. uh, but it's uh, oversaturated the the oh for sure the but you don't know that platform. as a kid yeah you or don't like know a that young adult. right because you're you're vulnerable and you're impressionable um you end up being lonely i'm just gonna read what i have right here you what? end up being lonely while married instead of lonely while single living your best life <clears throat> go ahead oh um i was gonna say it's it's very very creepy when adults say to children or adults even say to other adults about children like oh he's gonna be a heartbreaker when he grows up yes she's gonna have guys line it up for her yeah ew yeah ew ew sexualizing so gross yeah yeah don't say that (laughs) say so gross like when i talk to my niece i mean granted she's only about to be six months but i say you are so cute you are so smart you are so intelligent you are Mm -hmm. so wise like i'm Because she's not just cute. Like, she's going to be a bunch of other things. Right. And she could be whatever she wants. She could be whatever she wants. She could be not cute if she don't want to be. She's hot or whatever when she gets older. She could say that. (laughs) About herself. (laughs) (laughs) About herself. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I I wrote down some questions to ask. They're just fun sex questions. Let's do yours first. Okay. How and what did you learn about sex growing up? Oh, that's kind of similar to one of yours. We can talk about it now. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I guess that does kind of include well, online. Ask yours at the same time. We can just talk about them both. What was yours? Actually, can we talk about mine first? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, answer it. Or ask it. Okay. <laughs> answer it. <laughs> Tell us the question first, then answer it. Okay. How old were you when you found out about the concept of sex? So, like, not sex itself. Like, not... Sexual intercourse, but the concept of sex, the idea. I would say around fifth grade, probably fourth or fifth grade. Okay. What about you? Older than that. Really? <laughs> well, I want to say 12 is probably. Wow. You would have had sex ed before 12. No. I had sex ed in fifth grade and then again in middle school. I did not have sex ed in fifth grade. Wow. Well, so fifth grade sex I was ed. A, well, we'll get to that later. Fifth grade but. sex ed was just about your own body parts and like oh, the body parts yeah, yeah. of boys and girls. And then middle school was like sex ed. Mm, like condoms and stuff. I don't STIs. remember that. Nope. That must have just flown over my head. I don't, I don't remember that at or all. Or maybe you didn't have it. Some, I mean, some, some kids don't have it. I just and we didn't go to the same middle school. I just remember watching telenovelas, which is uh, Spanish soap operas. I would have been older. I would have been at least 10. Okay. Younger than that, I really I don't believe... think so. When was your first kiss? 10. Okay, I can believe that then. <laughs> okay, but but I say the concept of sex because in soap operas, as a kid, you don't really, at least the soap operas that I was watching, you didn't see them do the sex. <laughs> do the sex. <laughs> what I mean by concept is... They got naked, they got in bed, and that was sex to me. Mm-hmm. That's all I knew. Just sex sleeping to be. together. Exactly. Naked. So what did I do? I grabbed my Barbies, I grabbed my brats, I would play with my cousin Kathy, I would <laughs> strip them down, I would put them in a bed together, and I would just wait a couple minutes, and that was sex. Oh my god. <laughs> she brings that up to this day like... I think when I was little, it was like that, but like, well, but, you know, kissing back and forth, but... I got Bolin all excited. <laughs> uh, kissing back and forth. Like, to me, that was, like, quote-unquote sex. Hmm. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Just get in bed. All right, that's sex. That's kind of what it's like on The Sims. Yeah. I guess I was 10 then. 10 was a very revolutionary year for me. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I started liking boys more. I got my first kiss. Mm-hmm. Other things happened. <laughs> I like how you said I got my first kiss. Like someone gave it to you. Oh yeah, I didn't give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> I told Which you. in any other instance would be wrong, but this one really was given to her. If you remember back to like our second or yeah, third just episode, just go back. Just go back and listen. 
Oh, I was going to say what he said to me. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> he said, close your eyes and open your mouth. So yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> He's not listening. He might. His brother If might. you're listening, let us know. We'd like to know that you're listening. Okay, the next one is more about actual sex. What is your definition of amazing sex? <laughs> <laughs> mm. what is great sex what is your definition of amazing sex oh amazing sex oh, i'm getting flashbacks um for me amazing sex is when you're fueled by f- passion like you're not even thinking about what's gonna happen you just do mm-hmm. like you just Close your eyes and let your body do all the work. Mm. Like just, you don't have to think about. Yeah, it you're on much. autopilot. Like you're just, you're giving in to everything. It just, ah, uh, just when you're so connected in that way. Yeah. Just fueled by whatever love, passion, sexy time, lust, whatever, whatever it is that's <laughs> driving you. Yeah. You just do. Like you don't yeah. think about it. You just do. Yeah. And then you guys, you know, both finish. Obviously. Yeah. Both finished. That's a big thing. Yeah. Um, I would say a lot of the same thing. Um, spontaneous is really hot for me. Um, and like just wanting, like just knowing that both partners want to pleasure each other and doing that and both being able to finish. I think that. And, and, the, and then a great finish. <laughs> you know what I mean? The great finale. A great finale. Um, my next one is, when do you feel the sexiest? Um, probably right after the gym. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I probably feel my best after the gym. Probably the endorphins. Mm-hmm. Like you come here like, damn, like, yeah. And then you're, like, looking at yourself in the mirror the whole time. And, yeah, kind of a power move Mm -hmm. against yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to (laughs) say... This is so weird. Like, in a pair of underwear that, like, hugs your butt in all the right places to me. Okay. Just that. Like, that to me. um, Just underwear? Not that or the I'm underwear swearing. is the just the underwear itself makes me feel like oh oh I bet my butt looks real good right now, um, and I actually took a photo for Travis Travis size only, um, recently that, where I was in underwear and it was the best nude I've ever taken in my life. <gasps> Don't you just love that when you yes. take a good nude? I like turn myself on me. <laughs> Dude, I was like, oh shit, I am fucking hot as hell. Me moaning turns myself on. Mm. I don't even need to do anything. I, okay, here's a, this might be a hot take. I want Travis to moan. Like uh, I want when guys moan. Yes, like <gasps> that. Like I want to hear you enjoying it. Like if you're not moaning, I don't know if you're enjoying this. And then, like, how do I know you are? Like maybe you're not. Like uh, you, it's like affirmation. Like. Affirm that you like this place. <laughs> For me, it's not really about affirmation. It's just the fact that, like, you're loose enough to let that out. Yes. Like, you're animalistic enough to just, yeah. like, primal. Just. Yeah. Like, uh, it slips out because yes. you're so. Yeah, I don't need you to do it the whole time we're doing it. It's yeah. just every now, like, a soft little, or like a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next one is. Um. What kind of kinks do you like? Oh, or, we, or erotica? We can't talk about this. Why? I don't know. <laughs> okay, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like a kink, like a hot take kink. It could just be like, like for me, like I said, I like spontaneous. Mm-hmm. And I like, <laughs> this is going to sound so weird, but I don't mean it in the way that it sounds. That I like to be submissive, <laughs> but not in the way that other people are like this huge kink submissive, like not like that, but just like, I don't want to be in charge. I want my partner to be in charge. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and I know you feel the same way about that. Um, I do have a submissive 
kink and I would like to explore a little bit of BDSM. Mm -hmm. I just have never been with someone that I trusted enough to do that. Mm -hmm. But that is something that I would eventually like to explore. However, I do like taking control some of the time. So it just depends on your mood. Yeah. So like you ever seen those (laughs) pictures of like a dominatrix and she, you know, she has the guy on the floor on a leash or something. I could totally see you doing that. Uh, I would love to do that at least once in my lifetime. Like, I just need a man to just be on the ground and, like, lick my feet or something. Like, Yeah, but then would you want sex after that? Like, is it a sexual thing or it's just no. a power thing? No, but I want it to be for them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want, oh, them, want to, them to be turned on. Yeah, I it. want them to get off on me doing that. Oh, I, I want. See. I want to find those kind of men. That, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But for me to get off. I would be the submissive one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, let me Also, I let can't me believe be I just said that about BDSM. Oh, my God. <laughs> let me be clear about submissive, okay? I don't mean, like, um, humiliation or, like, I can't do what I want to do. But, like, a little bit of manhandling. You know what I mean? I want more than that. I little, want you to a type a bit of choking. Oh no, I want more than that. I need you to like tie little, me to the bed. A little bit of slap in my butt. I need you to slap my face. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I, I won't go that far. I want just some manhandling. I think that's it's not I'm really kidding. submissive. No, it's more manhandling. I think. Mm, I like, want more grab than manhandling. Me, put me in the position you want me. Like I want us like to that. break some furniture. Damn. But also I bruise easily, so that's gonna hurt. Okay, this is deep seated though. <laughs> and you're like oh, yeah, I know. fairy tale, like passion telenovela. Uh, no, <laughs> not necessarily. It's almost like um you know how like you this is gonna, okay, this is sorry guys, trigger warning. If you've never had soft love. You don't know what that is, mm-hmm. so you just crave crazy love, um, hectic love, and that goes with Roll sex too. Love. Yeah, like I've never really had like the soft and gentle and kissing and you know I've yeah. not, n- never. So like I don't know what that's like. Yeah. For so t- to me, I need the opposite, like the full extreme of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, let me go to the next question. I think I only have one more. What part of your partner or, like, a man's body is the most lust- lustful or sexy to you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? I don't know. Oh, um. <laughs> oh, um, uh, I haven't I'm, thought about this before. <laughs> okay. Let, hang on. So, if I'm looking at a guy, he's fully clothed, right? Like, mm-hmm. top. Okay, let's do fully clothed and naked. Yeah, yeah, Okay, okay. fully clothed. like long sleeves Mm -hmm. pants and everything the biggest turn on for me that i look at are hands okay like i need you to have some big hands wide uh full spread thick Thick. muscular Mm -hmm. i need to see some calluses (laughs) okay like it can't i've seen men with Smaller hands, mm-hmm. even smaller than mine, or compared to mine, I'm just like, oh, no, or dainty. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's fine, but uh, it's just thing. not my thing, and that's kind of what turned me. And what about naked? The big. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, um, no. no. That's not my no. answer. Um, I'm really into shoulders and calf muscles. I was gonna say shoulders. Mm-hmm. Okay, not calf muscles though. Calf um, muscles. Damn. <laughs> but Travis's shoulders, oh, like, I will I will grab his shoulders during because to me his shoulders are just so, like, I think for me it, it represents something. It, it represents, like, protectiveness and, like, mm-hmm. yeah, safety. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it turns me on. Um, but also, so that would be clothed and non-clothed. Clothed and naked. <laughs> yeah. You said it right the first okay. time. Oh, like, is non-clothed a word? <laughs> Last episode, it was hard to say it. <laughs> Last episode, you were like, was positive or good? And I'm like, they're the same thing. Yeah. Um, but also clothed, um, I would say the same thing about, like, arms and hands. So, like, hands, yes, but it's the whole thing. Like, shoulders, two hands, forearm muscles, and bicep muscles. And Travis got all that, so 
Lucky girl. The only other thing I would add is naked, um, like the midsection, like just before the crotch, like hips and abdomen area. I don't know how to explain it. Like bone, hip bone area. I think that's hot on me, my hip bone area. That's all I got. Nothing's hot on me that I think. <laughs> Next like, question. If, I, if I'm laying on my side, there's like this, um, I hate to say it like this, but th- there's like this. Your hip bone. Thickness. No, like this thickness over my hip bone that kind of looks like, you know, like just something you could grab onto. And that I think is cute on me. And Travis likes that part too. <laughs> I saw this one. Video. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I like saw if this... you're laying on your side that like right here in between your stomach and your thigh. Like, right here. <laughs> That's your hip bone. Yes, your hip bone, but it's the thickness on it. Like, the muscle and the fat that's on it. it I'm going to have to lay down real quick and feel myself. <laughs> I lay down and feel on myself. I was going to say, this one girl, she, like, wore a dress that went above her hips. And she she's like, what is this? And she grabs, like, her little, like, side handle. And then the, the guy stitches, and he's like... That ma'am will make it, like, will drive a man crazy, mm-hmm. like. I think I know what video you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's sexy. What is sexy about? Comment below. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. What? I like my lips. Hmm. I think that's probably the sexiest part about myself. Would you say you have dick second lips? I would not say that, no. Has anybody said that to you? Yeah, when I was like in fifth grade. Ew. Yeah, and I, and I had no idea what that meant. I'm like, what? I didn't even know it was a thing back then. Yeah, like fifth grade. Kids were nasty. Yeah, weird. Okay, do we want to go into common misconceptions or do you have more questions? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Okay. Oh, I, I was going to say that Um, I remember I had health class. Well, this doesn't really have to do with sex, but go never ahead. mind. We can cut no, it off. go on. ahead. Well, no, it goes with, like, uh, in Mean Girls, that video that I oh, sent yeah. you where the coach says, do not have sex. If you have sex, you will get pregnant. And, and you, you will, will die. die. <laughs> and I remember um, in sex ed, not sex ed, but uh, what did I say about class? In high school, we watched a video of a woman give birth. <gasps> and that scarred the fuck out of me. Oh, I think I was, like, a freshman. She just God. put it on. She just put it on. She just, she just made us watch it against our will. Mm, that was gross. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, at the time. <laughs> I mean, it is gross. No, it's still gross to me. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> at the time, it was gross, and it's still gross to me. I think it's gross, and I had a baby. Mm. I didn't have him vaginally, but I had a baby. Oh, I can't do it. I can't watch. Stop talking about having babies while we're talking about sex. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, common misconceptions. So, common misconceptions. I have some statistics to lead with. Do you have any statistics? I don't. Okay. According to a survey conducted by the National Campaign to Prevent Teen and Unplanned Pregnancy, 44% of teenagers believe that they cannot get pregnant the first time they have sex. 44%? 44%. Where did they get that from? It just takes one time. Yeah. <gasps> I just remember. Who told them that? Who told them that? Yeah. Like, oh. where did they get it from? Because I remember when we were younger, that was a common misconception. I didn't know it was 44% of people, but, like, who who drew that narrative? Really? Because when I was growing up, I would remember hearing, it takes one time. Yeah, maybe because by then we were telling people, like, it only takes one time to get pregnant. Oh. You know what I mean? But I remember when, in our generation, it was, I mean, you know, we were a little bit older, but, yeah, that's so insane. Now, for some people, now that we're older... You have to plan it and look and you know, do it while you're ovulating and all those things. But when you're younger, you're fertile, Myrtle. Anything to add? Um, no, I actually am such a dumbass that I just found that out like recently <laughs> about how to track your cycle and oh, when yeah. you can oh, get pregnant. Because yeah. I had no idea. I I had no idea when you could and couldn't get pregnant until I started planning for it. I still kind of don't know. Oh, I have a tracker on my phone now. But I guess you could track it, like, manually. You're talking about tracking your period, though. Right, and your ovulation. Yeah. It tracks it. I'm saying you're not currently trying to get pregnant, right? Oh, no. (laughs) Fuck no. No, no, no. I'm just saying I learned it because I was trying to get pregnant. Yes. That will not be happening for another two more years. The next one says, a study published in the Journal of Adolescent Health 
found that many adolescents hold misconceptions about the effectiveness effectiveness of contraceptions, like two condoms at once. <gasps> Every one of these, you're gonna be like, <gasps> okay, how dare okay. they? To, to be fair, I also don't know much about condoms. I actually yeah. just googled this Tuesday. Oh wow! <laughs> I googled. Okay, <laughs> obviously, I was in a. Um, monogamous relationship for 10 years we did not use condoms Mm -hmm. so i don't really know how condoms work but i always wondered does the guy have to hold on to it (laughs) no or like does it stay it stays so if it's too big it'll start sliding off if the condom's too big okay yeah yeah i know i got it (laughs) but i I didn't know i genuinely did not know so i googled on tuesday motherfuckers i'm 28 years old I have no I idea. I was Tuesday years old. <laughs> I was Tuesday years old, okay? I just I just didn't know. I didn't I I never had to worry about it. I mean so. it can slip off. It can slip off inside of you. <clears throat> and then you have to fish it out. <gasps> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Okay, hang on. And these teenagers I will say are having... whether that's happened to me or not. It sounds like it did. <laughs> You're saying these people are putting two condoms on at the same time? What? But it actually reverses their effectiveness because what? it increases the risk of it coming off, of both of them coming off. Oh, ugh. oh, god! Or, or I think it also increases the risk of them breaking because the lubricant can break down the other condom. <gasps> oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So. Oh, you don't poor do dumb that. idiot children. Yeah. The next one says a significant number of individuals believe that STIs can be transmitted through kissing, or sharing towels, or towel. Or toilets, mm. which is not accurate. Right. Some can't, herpes can be transmitted through kissing, but it would have to be an open sore to an open sore. So it'd have to be like, you know, you bit your cheek and then you kiss somebody who has an open sore with herpes. That could be transmitted that way. And it would have to be like a French kiss. Um, but that's very unlikely. Mm-hmm. Obviously, very, two very specific things have to be true for that to happen. Yeah. Um, the next one says there are misconceptions surrounding the concept of virginity and the presence of the hymen. A study published in the British medical (laughs) journal found that many people believe that the presence of an intact hymen is a reliable indicator of virginity, which is not necessarily true as the hymen can be stretched or torn due to various other activities other than sexual intercourse, riding a bike, certain sports can break your hymen, um, I don't know when, but I believe mine was broken before the first time I had sex. Because really? I did not bleed when I had sex for the first time. Wow. Yep. And I don't remember when that was or, like, what happened, but, yeah. Let me think. I think I bled. Mm. I'm pretty sure I bled. Yeah, most people do. Um, mine so- was painful as fuck. Let's read some listener responses to the common misconceptions question. I also, it, it, well, the specific question was, what is something you wish you knew or were taught about sex? So the first one is a really good one. I wish I knew sex wasn't porn. I always thought you had to look and sound like a porno. No one talked to me about sex, so I had to learn through porn. Mm. That's a huge one. I mean, kids today still, especially with the ease of it being on the internet. Yep. Um, and it's not real. I mean, I've, I like my boss at work has had to con- have conversations with their kids about porn and be like, you know, this is not how sex really is. Like, this is a, an act. This is like a movie, like a performance, a performance. Yes. Um, I'm going to, ha- in a few minutes, I'm going to have a, a recording on of a conversation I had with Travis before I came over to record today about sex. And he talks a little bit about that and like how he thought originally it was supposed to be like porn. And then he had to like kind of separate the concepts himself. I was going to say, I mean, obviously these are anonymous, but I bet this came from a male really? listener. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, what I mean by that is so m- more than likely uh boys will find porn before yeah. girls do not always the case but i think that's safe to say that it's more common that boys yeah. watch porn than girls it's actually like almost encouraged it's more encouraged in boys than girls to like explore sexuality different topic but we will uh, we will get there oh uh, okay because it'll be in the purity culture <sighs> conversation right it's okay for guys to be sexual but it's not okay for okay yeah we'll, we'll get there um, I was going to say, yeah, so these men 
have an idea of what they think sex is like through porn and then influence their girlfriends or mm-hmm. whoever they're with. Yep. And then if they're not aware or... If no one talked to them no about sex. Them, then that's what they also think it is. Right. It's very... It, it, you're at... It, it. <laughs> Jesus. At this time, you're very impressionable. So your first boyfriend, whatever they says goes. And, and if ex- what they says is toxic and not right, who's going to tell you it's not right? Because you're not going to talk to your parents about it. And that's exactly what happened to me. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I agree. That is what happened to you. Um, that was. Good. I would say that it even happened to me, but in the po- in a positive direction. Because, like I said, if your first boyfriend is someone who has the wrong thoughts about sex, then that will affect you negatively. But if your boyfriend is someone who has the right thoughts about sex, then it won't affect you negatively, which is what happened to me. And we'll talk, well, you'll hear Travis talk about that. Um, The next one is they wish they knew more about ovulation. Yep. And we were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. How to orgasm and different types of orgasms, for sure. Learned way too late. Yep. I learned at 23, 22. About, about orgasms? Mm-hmm. What about them? Different kinds and that I could have them. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's deep dive into that. So you didn't know pretty early on and we had to tell you, we being me and your sister, had to tell you that like pretty much every time you have sex, you're supposed to finish. And I was like, what? And you're like, well, first of all, you didn't really know what an orgasm was, like what it felt like, Mm-mm. because you really hadn't experienced it. Mm-mm. But then on top of that, like, wait, I'm supposed to be doing this every time? Like, it's supposed to be pleasurable for me? Like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. It's not just about him? Mm-hmm. And that goes back to purity culture, too. Well, that goes back to, you know, we talked about your first boyfriend mm-hmm. and their idea of sex and right. their the, how porn has a huge imp- influence on them, and mm-hmm. therefore it had a huge influence on me. So, like, I was, like, his personal porn star. Like, whatever he said, go. Like, there, yeah. me was... Whatever I wanted, fuck that. Like, yeah. And you didn't even know there was something wrong even, with that. I didn't even know there was something wrong with that. I didn't even know what I wanted. Right. I just assumed that sex was whatever he said and whatever mm-hmm. he wanted. It was his pleasure. Right. Until because I because he had more experience than you. Right. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even think about it. I didn't talk yeah. to anyone about it. I just whatever, whatever, whenever he want. And he was always yeah. the one initiating. So I, you know, whatever. And then at twenty two years old. I was 22 when someone fucking, t- when you guys told me that. And yeah. I was like, wait, wait, what? Huh? So when, what, how old do you think you were when you had your first orgasm? 22. Oh, okay. So like you went home and like had an orgasm or what? No, but well, I, I think I had, I might've had like minor ones mm-hmm. before the age of 22, but once I had an actual one, I was like, oh, big girl. Like, yeah. that was You've been missing nothing. out, girl. Like, what? Yeah. That's wild. Um, I was just going to say, have we ever said on the pod um, that me and Maria. Yeah, I have that in my notes. I said, I asked my sister and Kelsey how doggy style was done when I was about 13 or 14. I literally we, thought. We demonstrated it for her. Well, first of all. That gave me the wrong idea of how long penises are. <laughs> Wait, did we use something? Oh. Like a rolled up magazine or something? Maybe. Mm-hmm. But that's not why. And that's 11 and a half inches. Because I didn't realize. I just didn't realize where, all, <laughs> where the hole was compared to the. Like, I just didn't get it. I yeah. thought I thought the guy was doing this. Like, yeah. oh, oh, under and over. over or. Oh. Over and under. Or like, yeah, you're right, you're right. Like a valley, right? Yeah. With his penis. Like, I thought it bent down and then bent back up. Right. Because to you, your vagina's in the front. But really, it's in the middle. Yeah, like, I didn't realize how far back it was. And when you're bent over, it's It's open. Up. It's there. Yeah. yeah. And, so I t- <laughs> and so we demonstrated. I don't remember who did what. I think Maria bent over. <laughs> that sounds about right. And we demonstrated, like, okay, you see, like... This is how it works. And I was like, but, but how? Like, what yeah. do you mean? <laughs> I think you got it by the time we were done, though. Yeah, I got it. I yeah. understood it. Yeah. I'll always remember that. That's a core memory for me. <laughs> me too. Me and Maria showing you how doggy style works. Oh, my God. Do you um, have any other misconceptions? So, so this one more. just says, I learned, to, I learned not to yuck someone's yum. And that just means, like, kink shaming, I think. 
Oh. Yeah. When I first read yuck. that, I was like, Someone's ew. yum. But they mean, like, not to kink shame. Oh, early on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Alrighty. The next one says, I think a big misconception about consent is people don't realize that it could be taken back. I could say <gasps> yes, yes initially and yes. decide later I'm uncomfortable and decide Absolutely. to take it back. And we yes. will dive into that yeah. when we get to Up consent. until the second it happens, you no, can still say during. no. During. Okay, yeah, during. Yeah. Fuck it. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Um, and then the other one, the last one was a, bis- a big misconception with consent is some people mistake politeness as consent. Would you say the absence of a no? It's not. Or about, the absence of a. Would you it's say? not about the presence of a yes. It's also about the absence of a no. So not just not saying anything. That's not consent. Right. It's also about. It has to be like the presence of a yes. Right. Yeah. Um, but we'll get to that. We'll get to consent. That's going to be the last on this episode. Um, the next Oh, I have some... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I believed a guy when he said they didn't make condoms his size. Don't ever fucking believe that. <laughs> Nobody has a, a dick big enough that you can't put a condom on it. Um, I had no idea about how STDs could spread. Just no idea. I just thought, like, dirty people. Oh, that was just dirt, not actually a disease. No, sorry, not, not, not that. Not, like, uncleanly people. Just... People who slept around. Mm, I see. Okay. Like, I thought if I was a virgin, there's no way, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be exposed. Like, in my, my math wasn't mathing, <laughs> but that's what I thought. Yeah. Like, again, when you have sex for the first time, you could be infected with something. Yeah. I the thought, very first time. Yeah, I thought because I'm a virgin, there's no way that I could get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was my thinking It has when to I was be 16. people who have had multiple sex. Right. Partners. Like, Like, the chances increase with multiple, but that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, it just depends on who you're having sex with and who they're having sex with. Right. And a condom, to me, prevented pregnancy. It didn't... I had no idea about the STDs. Mm-hmm. So that's why when, when we weren't using it, I wasn't worried about STDs. Right, right. I was only worried about the pregnancy. Um, I didn't know that sperm could survive for up to five days. Mm. <clears throat> Until I was an adult. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that until just now. I got on, again, I got on birth control to prevent pregnancy because my boyfriend told me to. Um, But I had. Yeah, go ahead. But I had no real idea what it was doing to my body until I did my own research. The nurse at school who gave it to me did not explain. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, you were saying, like, you didn't even know that it was hormones that you were taking. I just, I just understood this is a pill. You got to take it every day and you won't get pregnant if you take it every day. And I'm like, okay, cool. That sounds easy enough. But yeah, again, getting on birth control because my boyfriend told me to do so. He flat out said, I'm not going to use a condom. Go get on birth control. And I did. Impressionable. Very impressionable. I was 17 at the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know any better. Yeah. I mean, I probably could have thought about it a little bit better, but I didn't. (laughs) Yeah. You were just like, okay. 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 I love you, so whatever you say, go. Yep. Um, and then that uh, sex meant pleasure for men and pregnancy for women. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. very interesting because um, one of the episodes I listened to today was they were talking about how, like, sex and pleasure are two different things. Sexual intercourse and pleasure can be two separate topics. So, like, you, you know, when you're talking sex education with kids – you can tell them, you know, logistically how sex works, but also how pleasure works. And, like, understanding that pleasure for yourself is important early on so that then you know when, you become, when you're with a partner that your pleasure is important. Mm-hmm. And you know your body well and what you like and what you don't like. Yep. I wish someone would have told me that first. Yeah. Explore yourself. Yeah. Know what you like. Right. Because then you'll be more confident in what you like and what you don't like when you then become with a partner. They were saying, like, if you put it in the context of, um, I'm going to give a trigger warning here for, um, sexual predators. Um, they say if you put it in a con, in the context of predators, you know, if no one ever talks to a young girl, say 15 years old about sex, and then a predator is talking to her and they offer up all this information that no one will talk to her about, then it's like, oh, you have all this information. Well, then you've gained her confidence. Mm-hmm. You've gained her trust. Mm-hmm. You've gained her, her attention. Makes it easier for grooming. Easier for grooming and all, and 
so on and so forth. Um, so yes, yeah, kind of the next topic I have is abstinence with education is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, unlike my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Let's wait till purity culture to come back to that. Okay. I've got sex education next. Okay. So here's some statistics on sex, sex education. According to the gut, gut matcher is the name of the Institute. <laughs> the gut matcher Institute. <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> gut maker might be maker. <laughs> It's M A C H E R. Oh yeah. Um, according to the Gut Maker, which is still weird, Institute. Gut Maker. Uh, as Gut of, Maker. <laughs> as of twenty twenty one, only twenty nine states in the United States and the District of Columbia mandate sex education, and only eighteen states require that information provided be medically accurate. I'm sorry. <laughs> twenty nine states require it, and D C. And only 18 states require that the information be medically accurate. So what, 11 states are just winging it? Saying whatever the fuck they want, if it's true or not? Yep. What? Yep. This is an epidemic. 18, guys. Talk about teen pregnancy. Oh, my God. The next one says, despite widespread criticism, abstinence-only education remains prevalent in some areas. It reports- Wait. Sorry. Go ahead. Do you think it's not mandated throughout the whole country? Because, I, I mean... This is a theory, guys, but I think I wholeheartedly believe it. They want to keep you down. Mm -hmm. So statistically, a teen pregnancy, they probably won't finish uh, high school. Mm -hmm. They definitely won't go to college. They Mm -hmm. won't, you know, move on up in their career. And this isn't for everybody. I'm just saying, generally speaking, um, it's kind of like healthcare too. Like they want to make these things so overly expensive to keep you in debt, to out keep of you yeah, out of reach. Actually, there's a statistic that minority groups have less sex education than non-minority groups. Because they, they want to keep it that mm-hmm. way. The more worker bees you provide, mm-hmm. that's all we really care about. Yep. The more people we can manipulate. Yep. Yep. 100%. And everything in life, not and just sex education. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, the it's next... very strategic. Yes. A report by the Gutmaker Institute found that as of 2016, 27 states required that abstinence be stressed in sex education programs. Research published in the Journal of Adolescence Health in 2017 found that comprehensive sex education programs are associated with a delay in the initiation of sexual activity, a reduction in the frequency of sexual activity, and an increase in condom and contraceptive use when sexually active. In addition, it assists in the decline of STIs. So it's proven, it's it's statistically proven that sex education helps reduce teen pregnancy, reduce um, early initiation of sex, reduce the frequency of sexual activity, increase condom and contraceptive use, and reduces STIs. Boom, son. Boom, you, you heard it here first, folks. I think that's really all I had on sex education was just the statistics. Do you have anything else on that? No, I don't think so. Okay. Want to take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. Hey, guys. Guess what? Did you know? We have merch. 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 We have shirts, crewnecks, sweatshirts, sweaters, mugs. Mm Mm-hmm. Hats. Uh, hats baseball caps yeah baseball caps buy one for your mom your dad your sister your brother your uncle your aunt your cousin your grandma your grandpa your dog everyone everyone everybody makes a good gift makes a great gift yes and we have new merch that say good things all happen exactly when they're supposed to our little quote so yeah. go check that out and also they're unisexual unisexual we know you like a little uni <laughs> <laughs> Little sexual uni moment. <laughs> Hop on there and get you some merch. And when someone asks you what what you're wearing, you tell them about our podcast. You even share an episode with them. Yes, of course. Whatever your favorite episode is. You can get that at bonfire.com slash store slash HWG dash merch. Okay, so we're back and I had a conversation with Travis. We're back and we're better than ever, baby. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> I had a conversation with Travis about the topic today because I wanted to get some of his opinions on it um, before I came over today. So I recorded those on a voice memo and I'm going to play them for you now. What was a misconception about sex that you had or that you feel like a lot of other people had when you were younger? Is the age limit and time when, when you're supposed to have sex. When I was growing up, it was more... It made it was more cool and oh man, you the shit. Oh uh, yeah, you that dude. 
if you was to have sex as soon as you could. Like it's whatever age that is, seven years old, eight years old, if you can do it, you are the shit in the neighborhood with all your peers. Mm-hmm. That's that. That's that's what I got from that. But even then, I'm so young and headstrong for myself that I didn't go for sex for those reasons. Even though I knew, like, my friends, they was doing it. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to smash her. I want to see if I can smash her because nobody in the neighborhood could, could get her number or pull like her. A challenge. It was more of a challenge for me growing up. Yeah. But I didn't never take it like that because I was never one of those people that really approached girls aggressively like that. Like, I, I hung out with multiple dudes that's cocky enough, uh, enough, you know, they, you know, they big about themselves. They can walk up with so much confidence and talk to a girl however they want to, whether they talking to her nasty or trifling like, and they still get their girl number. Yeah. Versus me, it was more like, I knew, I know myself. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's basically what it is. I just knew myself and I knew that for me, sex was going to be, I wasn't going to be doing it with every single person that came to my mind or every single person that I thought that looked good. At. Mm-hmm. I knew it wasn't, I wasn't going to have it like that. Yeah. When you take lust out the picture and it's just you and this other person connecting, y'all would take y'all time. Y'all would teach each other without even using words. Mm-hmm. Like y'all would know how to just move. The other person would take your hand, guide you to where it wanted to be. Yep. You will learn what sex is by being with the one that you really supposed to be being with, supposed to be having sex oh, with. Oh, that's a good, yeah. that's a good quote. I don't know if I'll add this or if I'll put this in, but talk about as if I am going to put it in. Talk about why you don't ask me for head. Like, really? Yeah. Like, blunt honest. The blunt honest, yeah. Because you're not at home? Because you see that as, I see like, that a as... porno thing. Like, uh... There we go, yeah. Like, yeah. to me, that's why I was, saying I was able to divide the two. I'm like, okay, I know girls like giving head. Mm-hmm. I, I know girls like receiving it. But when I see and hear about those girls that do like that shit, I automatically put them in the history or in the line of not you a porn star, but you might as well be with them. Mm-hmm. Because to me, if I marry you or plan on marrying you, you cut me cutting all that out. Like we can do that in the beginning of a relationship before we even think about marriage, kids, and all that. Like we're finding each other, we're finding our type of love, our type of sexual feeling in the bed. Yeah, yeah of course we're gonna experiment head, you know, do all that. But once for me, once I get it in my head, okay, I'm looking at you like this now. That like that was cute, that was sexy. I like how you was giving it to me, doing all that. But now I'm looking at you like that. You can't do that to me no more. And you're raising your hand up like high standard. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Like, cause yeah. you, not saying you was down there when you was doing it, but we was knowing each other when you was doing it. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm looking at you somewhere, something differently, I don't, I, I don't know. I just don't. Other dudes. So many other dudes like, man, I gotta get here. Wife, not don't matter. But if I eventually start looking at you like, hey, we still kicking and we still talking, we still doing those things. But and you're I'm, learning to gain respect. I'm for learning. Yes, basically, I'm learning to gain respect for you. And as I'm getting that respect, I'm like, you don't gotta be doing this no more. Just to pleasure me, we can, we can pleasure watch. each other. Yeah, yeah. You were saying that when. You were growing up whenever other people were talking about getting head, other guys that you're friends with are talking about getting head. They would say it in a way of like, oh, that bitch is going to give me head tonight or whatever. And they would say it in a disrespectful way. Yeah. So it drew the narrative in your head that head is only for women who you're planning on disrespecting. Yeah. And you never were that type of person who were di- who was like saying, oh, this bitch, that, this yeah. bitch, that. Talk to me about how you felt knowing that I was making you wait before we had sex. Stop it. Stop doing that. Um, like how I felt? Yeah. Like, did you know from the beginning I was going to make you wait? I have a feeling. Like, God can tell when they're on that list. On the yeah. waiting list. <laughs> the waiting list. <laughs> and it was your, it was your upbringing. What, what made you, what made you okay with waiting? It was a challenge for myself, also, not just for you. It was also more on, like, um, keeping my self-control, seeing if I can go without, and what would that be like? What also, like, 
you don't know what's going on without sex while you're trying to date while you're dating somebody and trying to get to know them. You don't really know what's to come of it if you ex sex out the situation. Like, how can I put it? When you verbally, when you verbally, like when you and one person get to know each other and y'all verbally say, "Oh no, I'm not wanting sex. I want commitment first. Get to know each other." That when you verbally say it, I feel like it puts a like a little ugh on the relationship that you're trying to build. Because it's like, you shouldn't have to say it. It should be something that should just be felt, heard. Like, mm-hmm. you didn't never have to. You I part, never told you yeah, straight Yeah, let's say most girls throughout my life will always tell the dude, no, nah, you know, I'm waiting till this or no, nah, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm going to make you wait girl. this long. I'm going to make. Yeah. You was, I felt it from your energy. Mm-hmm. And like I said, from your history of who you was raised and all that, I have to respect all that. That you can't be behind that. You said you had thoughts. Um, <clears throat> oh man. Okay. I I was just gonna say that. Um, oh, I don't know if I want this on the podcast. Oh no. Can I just tell you? Just tell me, and we can decide later to cut it out. Okay. For example, um, I I understand uh, when he's saying like. You know, now that you're my wife, I see you differently. You're on a different pedestal. Mm-hmm. There's even more respect now. Yeah. And there are certain behaviors to him that he condones as, um, what do you say? Like, uh, like porn star behavior. Yeah, that like is not, wifey behavior is mm-hmm. not, um, like, why did, he, did he call them sluts? I don't know what he called them. Uh. I think he said ho at first, ho. but then he started using fast. But, okay, yeah, like, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, so for, like, me personally, I would not give head unless you're my boyfriend. Like, unless mm-hmm. we're exclusive, that's not happening. Right. And also, I feel like kind of how he's talking about, like, fast and how he said, um, you know, when you're younger, you're not thinking about... Or, or maybe you are thinking about how you want to, like, what position, how you want to do this, type, yeah. whatever, right? That's also something else. People, when they when they hook up, they give 100%. Mm-hmm. You should not be giving 100% to a hookup. Yeah. You do you, boo-boo. But mm-hmm. personally, like, I don't know. It just, kind of like he's saying, like, there has to be levels to this shit. Mm-hmm. You can't give... You shouldn't give everything, give everything to everyone. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. I did want to say that, um, before we started recording, when I was asking him about that, about the head part, um, he wanted to make it clear that he doesn't feel like girls who give head in their relationship are hoes. No. It's only about our relationship with each other. Right. In which he has a standard for me that feels wrong to ask me for head. Now, I have offered many times and usually he's like, yeah, maybe. And then when it comes down to it, he would rather just get into sex because both of us are being pleasured rather than just one of us. Um, And that's not to say he's never had head, but um, he's just not one to ask for it. He would rather me offer it so that it doesn't feel like he is requesting something of me that is a below, below a standard of what he thinks of me. Mm-hmm. Going back to my comment, girl, you do you, you do you, you do you. Mm-hmm. Have your own standards. I don't care or none, whatever. Yeah, um, or none, or none. <laughs> I don't know shit about fuck. But going back to when he's talking about like these boys losing their virginity at eight mm-hmm. to twelve years old, mm-hmm. what the fuck is happening? First of all, who the fuck are they losing their virginities to? Mm-hmm. Are these also girls or guys who are also in that age range? Like, I have a friend who lost his virginity when he was, like, I think he said eight. To his babysitter. Mm -hmm. His babysitter, dude. More common than you think. She was, like, a teenager. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. That's disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. So gross. So gross. Very gross. So gross. Like, you're eight to twelve years old talking about this. Not right. only talking about it, but actually doing it. Right. Because, like he said, it's a challenge. Yeah. You you hang around the other culture. boys who 
are also talking and doing these yeah. things. The culture is like, it's mm. encouraged. Not so wrong. It's encouraged to, you know, lose your virginity as soon as possible for men. Yeah, that's what he said. But as the soon total as you can. opposite for women. Right. But then mm. it's like, how are you, how do you expect these men or boys to lose their virginity as soon as possible? But to then not have the girls lose their virginity as soon as possible. Like, how does... And the math ain't mathin'. Mm-hmm. Who are they going to lose their virginity to? And I also do agree that with that, too. Like, um... And, and this should be... Women, this, this should be your standard, too. If a man is putting out on the first date, he a hoe. Mm-hmm. He is not husband material. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> Again, I don't know shit about fuck. But, yeah, like, it, sh- it should not... If you want... Personally... If you want a future with someone. Yeah. He was kind of saying that. And part of it was like, and I might've skipped past this part, but he was kind of saying like, because I made him wait, um, he got to learn things about me that were not sexual. Exactly. He got to learn about me and me learn about him for five months before it became sexual. And then by the time we did have sex, it, there was a, level of respect for each other i don't know if i've you ever built s- that that that's not gonna come in in a couple of weeks yeah i don't know if i've ever said that on the, uh, this on the podcast but when i when i decided i was ready to have sex i told him and we were in a position where we could go ahead and do it and um he was very 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 adamant about asking me multiple times if i was sure he wanted to make sure explicitly that i was comfortable um, well, you know, I told him, I just randomly brought it up one day and he was like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. Like, let's do it. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, I- are you sure? A couple more times. And then even like right before we started, he was like, okay, are you sure? Like he really wanted to make sure that I was making the decision I wanted to make and I wasn't going to change my mind and back out. And I've always really am- admired that about him that he really took my comfortability into consideration, even though he had been waiting for five months. That's beautiful. I wish I could say the same, but I cannot. Yeah. And that's on, um, that is on. Hmm. I can't even say that's on being talked to about sex because I wasn't talked to about sex. I mean, that's just uncomfortability. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll lead us straight into consent, if you're ready for that. Or we didn't really talk about purity culture, but I mean, we've sprinkled it in. I do have a couple statistics. I do have something. Okay. By my mom. Just statistics first. Research published in the Journal of Adolescent Health has found that adolescents who internalize messages of sexual purity may experience negative mental health outcomes, including depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem. Oof. That's a statistic. How, what the, what's the percentage? Um, I didn't say the percentage. Or what? It just says it has found that adolescents oh. who internalize messages. It's just known that that happens. Mm. And then the next one says research published in the journal of sex or research sex or research has found that women are more likely than men to report feelings of guilt and shame related to sexual activity, reflecting the gendered nature of purity culture. And we were just talking about that. Like it's encouraged for boys to go and explore their sexual desires very young, but it's absolutely not encouraged for girls to do it. And why is that? Mm. What's the difference? Who who are these boys supposed to be exploring with? That's this what I'm is saying. such a double standard. It yeah. doesn't make sense. The math ain't mathin'. Math ain't mathin'. Go ahead with yours. Um, I was just gonna say abstinence with education is fine. However, unlike the way that I grew up, where my mother couldn't even say the word sex, mm-hmm. so we would just avoid it avoid the topic altogether yeah which was actually very dangerous for me um it left me clueless and susceptible to manipulation which is exactly what happened Mm -hmm. um and that really sucked for me like yeah if if anyone's ever watched bridgerton did you watch bridgerton Mm -mm. did i tell you about this already i think so yeah so in bridgerton um the first season daphne she gets married uh well this show is i don't know set in like the what are they called? Like the Victorian age or something, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like you're 
being presented and courted, courted and yeah. you have to find a husband by the time you're like 15 or whatever. So she marries this man and, you know, obviously she's a virgin. So when she goes and has sex with him, she doesn't think anything about it because she, whatever he does, that's what that is. Like she has no other reference point. She's never mm. been talked to about sex. So every time they have sex, he always pulls out and he never. <laughs> <laughs> and you said it like three times in a row. <laughs> well, she, she has no idea. She just, doesn't know that this yeah. is sex to her. Well, she can't figure out why she can't get pregnant. Like, why she hasn't gotten pregnant. I mean, because mm-hmm. that's your goal, right? When you get... You get a husband and yeah. you get pregnant and you start having kids. Wait, I think they had sex before they got married. Anyway, not important. The point is, she didn't know how to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. She didn't realize what he was doing because no one told her. And there's a scene in the season where she confronts her mom about it. Why did you not tell me this? Yeah. Why did you not explain to me what I had to look forward to? Right. Or what I should be expecting? Or what sex even looks like? Or what? Right. You left me clueless. I had no idea. Yeah. And she was so mad. And that's how I felt about my mom. Yeah. Do you still feel that way? I mean, yeah. But what am I supposed to do? Go back in time? Have you ever talked to her about it? Yeah, I have. Um, because she kind of chose to believe I was still a virgin this whole time. Like, you know, not this whole time. Until you were married? No, 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 no. no. Oh. I'm like, till when? (laughs) Up till I was about probably like 22, 21. Damn. And you had been with... I think she like kind... I think she wanted to believe that I was a virgin. Like how she was. Yeah. And so I remember one time... She wanted to sleep in my room for some reason. And I was like, okay, mom, but like, I have to wake up at five. And she was like, why? And I'm like, I, I have to take a pill. And she's like, what pill? And I'm like, did I make me tell you the the birth control pill? And she's like, why would you take that? I'm like, at 22, I might've been like 21, but I was like, mom, because to I don't get pregnant. Well, why would you get pregnant? Girl. We know this conversation we're having right now. Come on. She may... No. Get with it. Huh? I'm saying with for her. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like girl, come on. She's tra- up here. She wanted me to say it. I'm mm-hmm. like, is she, wa- like, wanting me to say it so that she believes it or because she doesn't actually believe it? Right. And I'm like, mom, I'm like 20 years old. Like, I've yeah. been with Jose for, like, forever. Like, yeah. what, did, what did you think? Yeah. And then, of course, she gave me this lecture about how you promised me... Oh. Okay, going back to religion, you promised me you would stay a virgin. You told me you were going to save yourself for marriage. Yeah, mom, I made you that promise when I was 15. Yeah. And like heavily religiously fearful. Influenced. Yeah. And and that was my goal. Mom, it just doesn't happen that way all the time. Right. This is a different age. This doesn't make me less than. Right. Because it made it's me not feel a moral dirty. And yeah, it made me feel... First of all, like, I couldn't keep my word to her. Yeah. And second Guil- of all... Guilty. Yeah, guilty. And, oh, my God, what did I just do? Right. And now I have this stain on me. And it always reminds me of Jane the Virgin. stain. <laughs> it reminds me of Jane the Virgin where I think her grandmother explains to her, like, you know, this is a pure white rose. Yeah. And when you lose your virginity and she crushes up the rose. Yeah. She's like, this is what you are afterwards. That's so toxic. Yeah. Like your dirt afterwards. Mm-hmm. And did you give that same rose to all the men that Amen. were also fucking me? I was just about to say that. What about the guys? Yeah. What are they? Cool? Yep. They're a new a new bloomed rose. Ugh. Gross. All right. Let's move on to consent. Unless you had something else. That's it. All right. I had a couple more things about purity culture and then we will move on to consent. Um... And so in purity culture and in sex education, it's okay to ask about the mechanics of sex, but not to ask about pleasure. Mm. And that's interesting because, and it, it really does give you like kind of a visceral reaction when you think about telling like teenagers about pleasure, because you think they're just going to run and go do it because it's so like desirable, but you really want to tell them about pleasure within themselves. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how we were saying before, where if you know what you like, well, in then Catholicism, that's not okay. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and most religions, I think that's not okay. Right. And it, there's honestly nothing. It's literally in your biology. It's literally in your biology. Like, uh, I can't even, um, yeah, we already talked about that. 
girls are set up to believe because of purity culture that their pleasure doesn't matter or that they are supposed they are not supposed to finish every time and then the last thing i wanted to say about like sex, sex education and purity culture was lubrication lubrication it is believed that it's like a moral failing if you need lubrication to start having sex and that is absolutely 100 percent incorrect mm-hmm. actually a majority of women should be using lubrication to start sex because it makes it more enjoyable for them i and it would make it more enjoyable for men too so i don't really understand where that comes from i, I think it goes back to porn <laughs> Oh, yeah, just get started right away. Like, no preparation. Uh, Not only just that, but, like, they want to see it creamy on its own. Mm. And it will get there. Even even if you use lubrication, it can get there. Mm -hmm. And it will. But a woman sometimes needs to be warmed up. And, I mean, she's not going to be completely wet from the very beginning unless you do a whole lot of foreplay first. And even then, in the middle of it, too, she could dry up a little bit. That's yeah. okay. There's hormonal reasons for drying up. Yeah. If you want to continue having sex with that person, you're just going to have to deal with lubrication. Trigger warning. This next segment discusses consent and interrelationship sexual ethics. It may be triggering to some listeners. Listen with care. All right. Let's jump into consent. Um, Here's a couple statistics. A survey conducted by the American Association of University Women found that only 24% of high school students report learning about healthy relationships and consent in school. Healthy relationships, a big one. They go hand in hand with sex. Healthy relationships and consent in school, 24%. According to a report by the Association of American Universities, the 13.5% of undergraduate women reported experiencing non-sensual Sexual contact through physical force, threats of physical force, or incapacitation since entering college. 13%. Whoa. Okay, so. The podcast episode that I listened to about consent, they really busted the conversation wide open about it. A lot of conversations around consent are talking about how consent is black and white. Yes or no. And it really isn't, if you think about it. And, And not to say that, like, oh, well, you know, if a girl says no, then that could mean yes. That's not what I'm saying. There are multiple nuances and it's multifaceted. And we're going to kind of talk about that. First and foremost, there's lawful consent. So what the law defines as consent, and we could go on a whole other episode about that. Mm -hmm. And versus what society deems acceptable consent Mm -hmm. then there is consent with someone you barely know who's a stranger and someone you've been married to or in a long-term relationship with consent is very different for both of those ways Mm -hmm. and not to say that like your husband can do whatever he wants to you because you've been with him for 10 years but consent is a different conversation when you're with someone for that long um so like let me just explain those parts a little bit Lawful, again, again, like what is lawfully deemed as consent, and a lot of states are lacking on their laws. A lot of states don't even have consent as a definition in their laws, so a lot of court cases are dismissed because consent is not defined. And then what society deems as, you know, um, acceptable for consent is really mostly what we're going to be talking about. So let me ask you this. If um, you go out with someone and you have drinks with someone and you get a little bit too drunk and then you have sex with them, did you consent if you weren't able to um, say so without being like while drunk? No. No. If you and your husband, who you've been with for 10 years, went out and you both got drunk and then you went home and you both had sex was that non non consensual no right so this kind of shows how it's different in someone you barely know versus someone who you know you're 
been married to. Now that's not to say that you, when you went back to your house with your husband, that you may not have been comfortable with that after the fact. Or your husband with your wife. Yes. You may not, you know, after you guys have woken up from the night before and you realized you had sex while you were drunk and you could barely remember it, that could be an uncomfortable feeling and you could feel wrong about that. But then you should be able to go to your partner and say, hey, I don't like that we did that last night. It makes me feel really uncomfortable. And that partner say either me too or I'm, I'm really sorry that you feel that way and like not get defensive about it because it's not an attack on their character. It's a, hey, let's have a conversation about this. This made me uncomfortable mm-hmm. and they should be open and, and ready to receive that. Mm-hmm. Um, let me just look at my notes real quick. <laughs> um, okay. So something about consent is, so let's stop, let's stop calling it consent for a second and let's call it sexual ethics. Okay. So sexual ethics would be like, you know, only having sex with someone who you know is comfortable to have sex with you. And throughout the act is continuing to show through body language, through verbal cues that they are comfortable. That would be sexual ethics. That would be without putting a yes or no on it. Um, Sexual ethics could also be um, someone you're having sex with is having sex with you without being obviously forced or coerced or um, led to believe that something might ba- something bad might happen to them if you do that, which could be like fraud or um, fear based or anything like that. Um, sexual ethics is more about a power dynamic, not whether or not whether or not you can say yes or no. It's the ability to be able to leave or say no in a safe space. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the age of consent. A point that they made that I thought was really interesting was like when you have, say, a 15-year-old girl that's dating, say, a 19-year-old man, you would be like, oh, my gosh, that's non-consensual. Like, you, you're, you can't consent. And that's not a helpful conversation because what you're saying to that girl is you're too dumb to consent to what you're doing. You're, t- you're just a little baby. You can't consent to what you're doing. You should. You should have a conversation with this girl, but you shouldn't be telling her like, oh, you can't consent because that's just the law. You should really be having a conversation about the power dynamic, what she's getting out of the relationship, what he's getting out of the relationship. Is this actually a healthy relationship? And nine times out of 10, it's not going to be because there's a power dynamic. That's why the age of consent is a thing. Um, but the whole like age of consent thing, when it comes down to the law of it, isn't helpful in telling young girls what they should or should not be doing mm-hmm. because they're, they're just going to rebel from that. And we've seen that mm-hmm. ourselves. Um, that goes kind of hand in hand with, Oh, well that's a sin. That's not helpful. Mm-hmm. That's not helpful at all. It's not stopping anybody. Yeah. Let's talk about the ethics. Right. Um, um. but it's also like, People think that by saying, you know, you can't consent because you're not 16 yet or by saying it's a sin, their mentality is that should be enough to stop you. But we're human. That's not right. That's just not the case. Right. Like, be real. Especially when you're impressionable, especially when you're in a vulnerable time in your life, you're learning who you are and what your worth is. Of course, you're going to be wanting to go into this relationship that feels really good in the moment. And then by the time you're actually being harmed, it's too late. And by harmed, I mean manipulated, groomed, whatever. Yeah, like, you, like oh, don't do that. Why? Because I say so. Well, right. help me ex- ex- understand why. Right. The logic behind it. Or if not, yeah, you'll be susceptible to people that and do tell you right. what it is. And they, might, they may not be good people. Right. Um, so there's another level to sexual um, ethics where it's like when you're with a partner... And like, they kind of talked about like, um, there's some people who are not immediately aroused. They need to like, they need a little bit of like convincing to be aroused, to have sex with their partner. That is not innately coercion because it's not using fraud. It's not using fear. 
you're just, you're actually asking for permission to convince them to like, could you be in the mood though? Like, could I convince you to be in the mood? You know, like kind of like that rather than like, Oh, come on. It's my birthday. Or, oh. well, if you don't have sex with me, then I'm going to tell everybody some little, you know, mm. those different ways of like coercion. Right. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up. Ah. Um, and so they kind of talk about this concept of here's how you know the difference. Okay. Are you wanting, willing, or enduring? So wanting would be like, I want sex. Let's have sex right now. Willing would be like, I'm not really in the mood, but I'm, I'm willing to like get in the mood or I'm willing to like be in the mood for my partner and like make sure my partner's pleasured. And then there's enduring where you're doing it out of obligation for your partner or, um, you feel like to you keep the to. peace, to keep the peace with your partner. Like if they're mm-hmm. just going on and on about wanting sex and you just want them to shut up and then you're enduring. So that's when it gets sticky. Your partner shouldn't be okay with having sex with you if they know that you're enduring. And they should be able to know that. Yeah. They should know that you really didn't want it and that you're just enduring for their sake. Um, actually, I had sent you a, a snippet of this episode where she talks about, like, your partner should not be okay having sex with you or any person even whether they're your long-term partner or not, should not be okay having sex with you if they know that you're uncomfortable, they know that you're in pain, they should not be doing any kind of, like, kink with you that they know that you're not uncomfortable with or that if they can tell that you're in pain. They should not be aroused if you are not uncomfortable or if you're not comfortable or if you're not, if you are in pain. There's something wrong with them if they still want to have sex with you, even though you're not in the mood, even though they know you're not in the mood. And actually there was a Facebook post or not an Instagram post a few months ago that was kind of like a, a write in like follower story or whatever. And it was kind of talking about that. And I, I posted in the comments, your husband should not want to have sex with you. If you are not in the mood, like they should not be turned on if you are not turned on, like that's not normal. And still to this day, this was months and months ago. Still to this day, I sometimes get notifications of people liking that comment because it's the truth. Like you cannot convince me otherwise that it, of it being normal for your partner to be okay with having sex with you. If you are not comfortable. Um, and there was another thing about that. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, So if you're in the middle of sex and your partner does something that you didn't like, but you didn't say anything in the moment, and then you go to your partner afterwards and you say, Hey, when you did this, I really didn't like it. I would appreciate if we don't do that anymore. Like no big deal. Your partner should be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like I should have asked before, or, you know, I promise we won't do that again. Like they should be understanding and knowing you enough and care about you enough to say, you're absolutely right. We won't do that again. And then follow up on that and never do it again. Mm -hmm. But there are men out here that will get defensive and be like, well, you said it was okay. Or like, you didn't say no. Or, you know, like I checked all the boxes. I made sure that it was okay in the, in the moment and, and whatever it was consensual or whatever. The question is not whether or not it was consensual. The question is, do you care about me enough to not do it again and to take my feelings into consideration? There are men out here that will say, okay, in the moment, and then turn around and do it again the next time, even though you said that you're uncomfortable with it. And that's not okay. So if the, if you have that relationship dynamic, that's not okay. I'm here to validate you for that. It doesn't have to be whether or not it was consensual. It's just, I was uncomfortable with that. And my partner's not taking my feelings into consideration and my safety into consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um, so there's the, there's, um, a phrase going around called enthusiastic consent. Have you ever heard of that? Where it's like, not just yes, but like, heck yes. Like Mm -hmm. I am like, yes, I want this for sure. I'm, I'm convincing enough to say, yes, I want this rather than just like, yes, which would be enduring. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of saying enthusiastic consent, which is a little bit harder to understand, you can say authentic consent which means it is an authentic yes coming straight from the heart. It was not persuaded. It was not coerced. It was not threatened, whatever the case may be. 
Um, I think that's all I had. Wow, I said a lot of that. I had a lot on it, and then I just said it a lot fast. <laughs> Um, so something that is <clears throat> really harmful in um, cases in which we can we talk about consent or where consent is the question in, say, a court case um, or just like, you know, talking to other people about it. Something that is a big problem is that we focus on the victim's behavior and whether or not the victim consented rather than the malicious in intent behind the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. So there actually, there are organizations that are trying to turn around that narrative uh, so that in court cases, when say there's a sexual assault victim trying to, you know, get their perpetrator um, to take accountability for what they've done and get charged for it, they're trying to turn around the narrative to focus on, okay, yet whether she said yes or no is obsolete because what the what is going to get him charged is whether or not he had malicious intent. Did he use fear? Did he use force? Did he use exploitation? Did he use... Um, did he know that she was uncomfortable in some way and ignore that. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that are being worked on right now in society and in the courts. Uh, I, I applaud that. And I, I'll put some resources down in the, in the show notes about that. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to mention that. Well, I think that's all I got on consent. Do you have anything? <laughs> you pretty much said it I all. I know. I just like blah, 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 blah. You word vomit everything. I know. Oh, I said that there were some more comments. There were some more misconceptions. We'll just read those real oh, quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so why is it only loading part of it? Okay, there it goes. Okay, so some more common misconceptions. I think that sex has to be such a special thing. If that works for people, by all means. But I think casual sex is totally fine. So she's saying she thought. Um, I think casual sex is totally fine and often looked down on in our society and shamed. I am very happily monogamous in my marriage, though. LOL. Next one says, I think there isn't enough education on the spectrum of sex drives. Having a low sex drive isn't normalized. And I think a lot of people with low drives feel like something is wrong with them mm. when that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very, very, very good point. Mm -hmm. I was shooketh when my, my, when my therapist mentioned porn and frequent masturbation can impact sexual experience, mm -hmm. like not being able to finish without porn and mm -hmm. losing sensitivity. Absolutely. Porn is not, <laughs> it's okay mm -hmm. to watch porn every now and then, but Research has shown that, yes, you will get... Desensitized. Absolutely. Emotionally and physically. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the next one says that all women meet climax with penetration. I've had to teach way too many men that. That, it's, that that's not true. Yeah. Um, I dead ass had a man tell me that it was my fault he couldn't get me off because I had masturbated. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <sighs> <laughs> like a man told her that because she's has masturbated at some point in her life, that was the reason he couldn't get her off. My good sir. <laughs> My good sir. The math ain't mathin'. The math ain't mathin'. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, to the comment before that, it's not always just about penetration and most of the time women can't can't get yeah, off it's, on it's, just penetration. It's harder. Yeah. Not harder. It's less likely. <laughs> it's harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's less easier it's not harder yeah like yeah it's less likely less like yeah yeah you yeah. get more with the clitoral <laughs> yes you have to have more clitoris stimulation um why do you think we like vibrators <laughs> if you didn't know how far the clitoris goes you should look that up when you say how far what do you, what do you mean like where all the nerve endings are because right? oh, yeah. it goes into it, it starts at the clit and goes into the vagina mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um 
And that's really interesting. You should know that. You should probably knock on the door a couple of times before you go straight in. You should probably learn about the female anatomy before having sex with it. Amen. Just saying. Men's anatomy, pretty simple. <laughs> female anatomy, a little hidden. <laughs> so maybe just learn about it a little bit. Get a map. <laughs> Draw a picture. Draw a picture, yeah. <laughs> but don't show anybody that picture. <laughs> All right, do we have anything else? No. Nope. All right, y'all, it's late. It's 12.59, so almost 1 a.m. That's our fault. We watched the Pacers game. Go Pacers. <laughs> They're killing it. Hopefully they make it to the playoffs. Yeah. But uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. We really, really enjoy your feedback. We've been getting feedback. We got a lot of great feedback about last week's episode. So please give us some more feedback. It really keeps us going. It really inspires us to do more really meaningful episodes. So continue to give us all the feedback you have. Even if it's like some criticism, we can take a little criticism. It's okay. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Um, go buy some merch. And we'll see y'all next week. Wait. Our next episode. <gasps> oh yeah. Our next episode <laughs> is our anniversary. It's episode. our part anniversary. We've been doing this shit for almost a year. A year. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yep. And then the episode after that, we have a guest. Yep. Should we say who it is? Sure. Y'all, y'all, hear us, y'all hear us talk about Brian all the time. He's coming to be on the pod. He's coming back. Yes. This will be his second time on the pod. First time in person. Yep. And then the week after that. Mm-hmm. We're going to go see Ladies, Ladies and Tangents. Tangents. Uh, their live show. Yep. And we're gonna record the pod in the car on the way to Chicago. We're gonna do like a little mini blog. Yep. But so yeah. Exciting things yes. for this month. This month is gonna be good, so stay tuned. We're here. We're not queer, but that's okay. <laughs> and we'll see y'all next week. Goodbye. Okay, bye. bye.